Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial video for you guys. Today we're going to look at lesson 5.7 and lesson 5.7 talks about adding zeros to your division problem so that you can actually compete, complete the whole division process. So sometimes when you're dividing decimals, your dividend may not have enough digits in it so that you can actually finish all of your division steps. So I'm going to show you how you can add a zero to the very end of the dividend to go ahead and finish the process of dividing without changing the value of your dividend. We're also going to talk about how you can use what is normally known as a remainder and how you can represent your remainder as a decimal in your quotient when you're dividing and dealing with decimals. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples, one that shows each of those things happening, and then I'll be back with closing thoughts. So I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, in this example, we're going to be dividing 45 and 8 tenths. I've written my division steps here. Does McDonald's sell burgers raw or divide first, then multiply, then subtract, then bring down, then ask yourself, do you have a remainder? So I have those off to the side so that I don't forget. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make sure to tell myself, for right now, I'm just going to divide this as if that decimal point isn't there. I'm going to completely ignore it right now. So I'm going to start off very simply. I know that 4 can go into 4 one time, but I'm also a fifth grader and I know my basic facts, so I know that four can go into 45 a total of 11 times. So I'm going to multiply 11 times four, which is 44. I'm going to subtract 45 minus 44 is one. I'm gonna bring down this eight right there and then I'm going to start the process over because I know that that is not a remainder. So I'm going to go back up to my division. 4 can go into 18 a total of 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. And then 18 minus 16 is 2. So this is where the essential question of today's lesson comes into play. So right now I have a 2 there. I could leave it as a remainder but I could also add a zero to my dividend and bring it down just so that I can finish out this problem. The reason why I can add a zero here is because since this is technically a decimal, 45 and 8 tenths, me adding a zero there does not change the value of 45 and 8 tenths because I know that 45 and 8 tenths is the same thing as me saying 45 and 80 hundredths. So I'm just going to put a zero there so I can bring it down and finish out the problem without a remainder. So I'm going to go back up here, start the process over. Four can go into 20 five times. Five times four is 20 and 20 minus 20 is zero. So the last step that I would need to do is to make sure to remind myself, okay, this was a decimal. So I need to go ahead and bring my decimal point up. And now I have a quotient to 45 and 8 tenths divided by 4. Before I move on, because I know how to do this, I'm going to check my answer. So I'm going to multiply my quotient, which was 11 and 45 hundredths. I'm going to multiply that by 4. And in the last chapter, I learned, well, I'm just going to move this decimal point out of the way two times for the time being. I'm going to tell myself I moved it twice. And then I'm going to multiply these as if I'm dealing with whole numbers. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 2 is 18. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And 4 times 1 is 4 again. Now, right now, my answer says 4,580, but I'm going to remind myself, no, I moved a decimal point out of the way two times to the right, so I'm going to come in one, two times to the left and replace it, and since this matches my dividend, I know my answer is correct and I can move on to the next problem. So that was your first example. I'm going to give you a second one. Okay, in this example, you're actually taking a whole number, 372, and you're dividing it by 15. And in this example, we're going to learn how we can use adding a zero to represent what would be our remainder as a decimal. So the division steps still say the same. We don't have a decimal point in the uh, dividend right now, but that will be changing in just a second. So here we have 372 divided by 15. I know that 15 certainly can't go into 3, but I know that 15, 15 can go into 37 two times. I'm going to now multiply 2 times 15 is 30. Now I'm subtracting 37 minus 30 is 7. 
Then I'm gonna bring down my two. And I know that that is clearly not a remainder because 72 is larger than my divisor, which means I'm gonna start this process all over. 15 can go into 72, I believe, four times. Four times 15 is going to be 60. And 72 minus 60 is going to give me 12. So typically, what you guys have been taught to do is to say, okay, well, that would be your remainder because 15 cannot go into 12. And so you would express this as 24 remainder 12. Now what we're showing you is that what you can do is you can add a decimal point, and it's very crucial that you add that decimal point, and a zero. And you have to add that decimal point because if you don't, the value of that dividend would change. If I just put a zero there with no decimal point, now I'm not dividing 372. I'm dividing 3,720, which is a totally different problem. So the decimal point being placed before the zero is very important. And if you place it there, I would just go ahead and place it at the top in your quotient. And then you're gonna bring the zero down just so that you can finish out the problem. I'm very, very smart, so I already know that 15 goes into 120 eight times. Eight times 15 is exactly 120, and 120 is zero. So now the quotient to 372 divided by 15, instead of me writing it as 24 remainder 12, which is what it would have been, I can express my remainder 12 as a decimal. So this eight tenths, is your remainder but just in decimal format so those are your examples on how you can add a zero into your uh, dividend so that you can complete your problem i'm going to flip my camera around and then i'll give you my closing thoughts for this lesson so those are your two examples so in the first example when we had what looked like was going to be a remainder we just added a zero to the very end of the dividend all the way to the right brought that zero down and that allowed us to go ahead and finish out the division problem and of course, after we finish doing that, we check our answers because you always want to check your answers if you can. The second example we have, we had a remainder. We chose not to add a zero to the dividend and bring it down and finish the process. We just chose to take that remainder and write it or express it as a decimal in our quotient. So those are your examples on adding zeros to your dividend or adding zeros to your problem when you're dividing with decimals. As always, I hope this lesson, or this video I should say, was helpful to you. I hope it clears some things up. If it was helpful, be sure you subscribe, and as you're doing these types of problems, remember, always, 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 always check your work. There's no reason why you wouldn't if that option is available to you. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.